you know, coffee's like, let's go, I can't wait to get outside, I can't wait to get outside. Welcome to chapter nine, the intercut, one of the most well-used editing patterns in television. A beautiful way to keep our narrative interesting, informative, and exciting, while at the same time, moving the story forward in a pleasing way for our audience. There are many different types of intercut, and they all depend on what elements we've got in our rushes. But whatever form it takes, it's a cutting pattern that is essential to master for the professional editing world. Intercutting is everywhere. We use it in pretty much every single genre in television, from reality TV to highbrow documentary. In this first tutorial, we're going to introduce all of the main types. In a broad sense, intercutting is the weaving together of two or more separate elements into a coherent and seamless sequence. It can be large or small. We can be intercutting big storylines and themes, or we can weave smaller action shots together. Each type serves a purpose, and we must learn when to use the right one when they are called for in our scene. There's obviously huge variation, but it is possible to train our minds to look at our footage in a certain way that allows us to create that perfect interweaving of the elements. First and foremost, intercutting is all about structure. Which elements and at what points they are weaved together within our sequence requires us to think journalistically about how we construct that interweaving. Creating a narrative arc with one set of rushes is one thing. Creating it with more than one requires us to think a lot deeper about structure. That is the creative part of our minds that we have to turn on. So, before we delve into the various techniques of the intercut, let's look at the main types. As with anything in narrative editing, there is often wild variation. But for our purposes, we can classify the various forms of intercutting into five broad types. Number one, intercutting B-roll with B-roll. We often weave two different strings of B-roll together in TV scenes. We take progressive or illustrative B-roll shots from two different footage sources and slot them together one after another on the timeline. Number two, intercutting interview with B-roll. Now, through learning how to build a basic sync pool and picture painting process, we've kind of looked at this one already, albeit from a different direction. But it's still worth reminding ourselves of its characteristics. Mixing interview with B-roll is still classified as an intercut. We're taking two separate elements that were not shot at the same time and weaving them together to make a coherent sequence. This is a huge part of many scenes in television. I keep thinking, yeah, my panels are gonna be in St. Packer Station, and it's gonna look good, it's gonna look great, and I'm gonna see it finally up and done. But. I haven't really thought about it. There's gonna be thousands of people seeing it too. And I'm gonna be looking at their faces, you know, and watching their reactions. Number three, intercutting interview with actuality. This is the mainstay of reality television, among many other things. Actuality footage is intercut with directly related interview. What's it like working with Di? Uh, it tests me every day, my patience. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> when we came into the business together, you know, I said, Di, you, you, you know, feel free to push me. I need a push. I'm an artist. You know, I need a kick in the butt once in a while. Oh, no. How is that going to work with your square pictures? And then she kicks me in the butt. And I'm like, back off! <laughs> Could you just stop kicking me in the butt? Jesus. 
<laughs> Number four, intercutting interviews with interviews. This is a great one when we have two or more characters talking about the same event. We are showing how these characters feel or think about something, or they could be taking turns in describing something that happened. You know, when uh, the idea was first proposed to me to like go out at dawn and take pictures, I didn't think, wow, I'm gonna have to get up early and you know, it's gonna be really tough. I went, Eureka, why didn't I think of that? Really what we were trying to do was to show people how incredibly beautiful, how incredibly peaceful, how incredibly empty their cities were at dawn when, particularly in summer, when most people are asleep and they miss this incredible time of day. It's just something about meeting the sun when it comes up, you know, and witnessing the, the, the start of the day, the birth of the day. There's no way, there's no, there's no uncorny way to say it. It's, it's a rebirth every morning. The sun goes to sleep and it wakes up and it wakes up. It brings with it life and warmth and happiness and joy and, you know, um, rejuvenation. I think most people who live in cities like London and Paris are just so used to it, them being busy and full and chaotic and stressful and hectic. And we wanted to show people that there are times when you can find some amazing serenity, not just at night time, but at that moment, you know, those few hours of um, early morning, four, five, six a.m., when people haven't got up and filled the streets. Number five, intercutting actuality with actuality. If there are two sets of actuality rushes theoretically happening at the same time, we may want to weave them together to show a direct comparison between the two. For example, think of a competition or race between two different characters or groups in an entertainment show. These are five main ways that we can use intercutting to great effect when structuring our scenes. Of course, it depends on what we've got in our rushes and what our intended purpose of the scene is. Intercutting serves many purposes, which we'll be looking at in detail over the course of this chapter. But before we finish this tutorial, let's introduce three words that are so applicable to many of the main types of intercutting. We'll talk about them a lot during the course of this chapter, but they're great things to start thinking about now. Firstly, juxtaposition, two things being seen or placed close together with contrasting effect. Secondly, comparison, a consideration of the similarities or dissimilarities between two things or people. And thirdly, contrast, the state of being strikingly different from something else in close association. These three words provide us with excellent insight into the purpose of intercutting narrative elements together. They are a huge part of television editing, and we're going to be talking about them in great detail over the course of this chapter. We can use intercutting to such great effect in editing and mastering the characteristics and techniques of the many types is another hugely enjoyable process. I hope you enjoy learning this intriguing part of the craft.